Welcome back to another fly tying episode. Today's fly is going to be a fly called Jim's Smelt. I'm going to start with my hook in the vise and some 210 UTC thread in white. And I'm going to wind this on real quick. Uh, I'm just putting a base of thread down on my hook shank, working my way down to the point of the hook. Uh, Jim Smelt was created by Jim Bernstein. Uh, Jim is the manager of Eldridge Brothers Fly Shop here in Maine. Uh, it's in Cape Nettick, Maine. Stopping my thread at the point of the hook, I'm going to snip off this tag end and I'm going to grab some tinsel. I've got some two-sided tinsel here. It's a gold silver. The size is large. A good general rule of thumb when you're cutting your tinsel to length is twice the size of your hook. Twice the length of your hook, rather. Sometimes I like to grab my scissors and snip off one of these corners diagonally like so and that just helps um, tie in the material a little bit easier. I'm going to take this thread all the way back up to where I started the thread initially and since this is a long hook the thread's going to start cording up so might want to give it a couple spins if that's something that bothers you and that will help widen out this UTC thread again I'll give it another turn here So I'll come in and throw just a quick half hitch in so that my thread doesn't jump around on me while I wrap the tinsel here. I'm just going to grab the tinsel here and wrap forward, trying to achieve fairly nice, even touching turns. Grab my bobbin, just bind down that tinsel with a couple of tight turns. Be careful not to let up on your thread tension here, you'll lose the whole wrap job you just did. And I'll snip off that extra piece. Looks like I got a little chunk still left hanging here. I'll try to snip that off. And I'll try to cover this up a little bit. Now I'm going to throw in a couple half hitches and snip off this white 210 thread and switch it out for some fluorescent red. Now the only fluorescent red that I have at the moment is this uh, large size 210. So I'm gonna do my best not to make this red hotspot too bulky. If you guys have a 70 denier or smaller size thread, definitely recommend using that. But for now, I think I can get by with this. So I'm just winding this thread on. And I'll grab my whip finisher and just make a quick whip finish. Now I'm gonna come in with some white thread again, but this time smaller. This is a size 70 denier. Definitely do not want to use a large size for this because I'm going to be tying in six different colors of bucktail plus a peacock curl topping and uh, 
if I used 210, it would just be way too bulky by the time I was done. So check this here. You can see that I've moved the, th the white thread back, and this is as far as I plan to move it backwards. From now on, I'll just be tying my materials in forward and coming back to this position. So now I'm going to grab a white, natural, undyed bucktail. I'm going to snip off just a few fibers of the white. Now I'm going to even this clump out and separate into just three or four strands of bucktail here. Very, very sparse pattern I'm tying today. You can see I've literally got three strands of hair here, and that's perfectly acceptable. And you could snip off your butt ends of hair, but I prefer to leave mine on until I'm finished with all the colors. So the next color is going to be some dyed yellow bucktail. I'm going to come in, separate the short fibers, pull out the extra long fibers. And once I've got this nice and sparse and level, I will set it on top and repeat the tie-in process. A few turns over the top, wrapping forward towards the hook eye, and bring my thread right back to where I started. All right, color number three is going to be some red dyed red bucktail. And repeat the process. A very sparse clump of red here. Pull out the short and long fibers and even them out. And place this on top. A few wraps forward and bring the thread right back to where we started. All right, we're halfway done with this bucktail. Now I'm gonna grab some blue. This is actually a Kingfisher blue uh, dyed bucktail. Same thing as before, just thinning this clump out. And looks like I've got a few more of these blue fibers than I did the previous colors, but that's okay. And I'll get this tied in and reach for my next material. So here I've got some lavender bucktail. Grab this and just thinning out the hair, same as before. Set it on top, few loose turns forward towards the hook eye, bring the thread back, and the last color is going to be some purple, much darker purple than that lavender as you can see. Thin it out, and set it on top here. You can see I loosely trap those fibers just like this. Set it on top in a loose wrap. Move it forward. And now that I've got all the colors on, guys, I'm going to apply some pressure right here. Watch this. Pressure, pressure. And the hair will probably stick straight up in the air here. So you can see the fibers are going everywhere. And that's because I need to move my white thread a little bit further back, right where it meets that red, and boom, that's much neater. See how that works, guys? So I'll come back, I'll pull these fibers up and snip them off with my scissors all at once. That's definitely a time saver as opposed to, you know, snipping every color individually. And personally, I think they tie in better when you just snip it all at the end. All right, the next material is gonna be some peacock curl for a topping. 
I'm going to set this on. Uh, same length as the hair, just beyond the rear of the hook. That looks decent, so I'll pull these up and snip them off. So this pattern calls for two strands of crystal flash. So I have a single strand in my hand. I'm going to line up the butt ends here, like so. Once I've got them nice and even, I'll tie this on on the side, not on the top. Just set this on the side here. Take some wraps forward. And then bring the thread right back to where I started. Now you could come in with your scissors and you could snip this off or I'll show you a little trick here to save some time. You can just take these two strands, pull them off to the opposite side and take some turns to secure the material. Just kind of working it to the position you want it as you go. Coming with the scissors now, trim it to length. And there you have a speedy way of tying in four strands of crystal flash. And that's going to be the last material, guys. So I'm going to take this white thread and just build up my head here, build up the shape of my head. And as you're building up this head, just keep in mind that there will be some um, eyes painted on this head. So building up a nice even thread base as your head is a really good idea so that your paint application can go on smoothly. And that looks pretty good to me. Uh, maybe a little bit small since I do have to paint the eyes on, but I think I can make it work. I'm just going to throw in a whip finish here. Tighten that up and throw in another one. And I'll come in with my scissors and snip this off. And that's it for tying. The rest of the application is painting and coloring these eyes. So I'm going to grab some acrylic paint in yellow and black and also a black sharpie. I believe the way that Jim finishes his flies is that he uses a black thread to finish the fly. He leaves the top of the head black and the underside of the head gets painted with a white paint. Now I did the opposite. I used a white thread and I'm going to use this sharpie to just color the top black. Now that just gives it a nice, realistic, two-tone color scheme, and you can approach this however you'd prefer. And that looks good enough for me, so once you get yours straightened out to how you like it, you can grab your dowel or whatever you're using to apply your paint for the eyes. You can see I've got my dowel with a wide end and a small end. I'm going to dip the wider end of my dowel in some yellow paint and try to neatly apply this dot for the eye. Do the same thing to the other side here. I think I need to apply a little bit more on my side. Now I'm going to wait for this to dry and I'll be back. Okay, the yellow has dried. I'm back with some black acrylic paint here. Just going to put a little dab on my fine end of my dowel. Put a little pupil in there. One more little black dot. And now the eyes are finished, and this thing's starting to look a little more lifelike, you know, like a bait fish. And the only step left is to finish your head with some sort of cement polish or lacquer. Here I'm using Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. 
I'm going to put a coat on and let this dry. All right, that first coat of Sally Hansen's has dried. Here comes the second application. And there you go, guys, the finished Jim's Smelt. You can see I've tied this one up pretty sparse, and sparse flies definitely perform well for me. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.